when he's flying and still having gotten above the altitude that he rolls out of bed every morning after. <laughs> I grew up building model airplanes and being interested in planes, uh, but it wasn't until 1973, and I had a part-time job in a library, and I was restocking books, and one of the books that came into my hand to restock was a book called Beginning Gliding by Derek Pigott, and on the desk cover it had a picture of, well, I didn't know, it was looked like a pretty airplane to me, it was a K-6. I um, took the book home, and was just mesmerized by it. Read the entire book that night. Went out and got every book I could find. And this is the old days when you're reading things like Philip Wills's books and that sort of thing. I got every book I could find um, and just decided that this was as close to magic as you come in this life. That you, that you could fly hundreds of miles and hours on end with a motor. Uh, that's why I started and that's why I still do it. Um, many years later, I got the chance to tell that story to Derek Pigott in Lashen. And uh, that's why I did it and why I still do it. Thank you. Well, maybe when you come back east, of, when you fly in the Eastern Contest, you can get a better crew that doesn't keep worrying about where you, where you sleep so well. <laughs> Okay, yesterday's winners. Uh, third place was uh, Whiskey Echo. There he is. Second place was Jersey. And first, and first place was Mr. Ken Sorensen. Okay, come on, story. You don't, you don't get anything first. You have to tell the story. You want to sit first. <laughs> Uh, well, as, as my father explained to me years ago, he said, behind every successful man is a woman with a sharp stick. <laughs> <laughs> so with that in mind, I would like to start by thanking Michelle, who has been my crew and a wife for almost 40 years, uh, without whose support this wouldn't, uh, this wouldn't happen. Uh, as far as the flight goes, uh, I looked at the traces last night of uh, the rest of you, and it was really interesting to see how we all solved the puzzle yesterday. We took wildly different uh, paths, and a lot of people went to the to the south to the sub to the right side of that first cylinder. I actually went to the left side. I pretty much went right over the turn point and went about uh, 10 miles past the turn point, and then I went up uh, 71, I guess, pretty much the highway uh, up into the next to I went to the very left edge of the second turn point and some of you went to the very far right side of the, of the second turn point so it was really interesting but I was fortunate I, locked, I joined up with um, John LeBond and uh, Monty and uh, Pete Alexander going up that leg up the highway and the four of us together made that work pretty good and then once I got up to the to the Springfield area, I just worked around the edge of the uh, airspace up there and stayed over the infrastructure. And I actually hit this is going to be I hit a uh, a couple of good thermals just before the Marion Airport, <coughs> and the last one I hit just before the airport took me up to 6,000 feet, which was actually high enough to get to the Hooks past Hooks Airport, the turn point, and just glide glide from there past Hooks and come home. As I was approaching the Hooks Airport. Guess what I saw? I saw the karate jump. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. As I'm approaching the airport, I saw a jump plane, saw the guy come out of the jump plane, saw the parachute open at that point. I didn't watch the karate part. But, uh, you know, he did it was... mid-air. He hit a board mid-air. Another guy holds the board, and he hits it mid-air. Oh, really? OK. Well, maybe that wasn't him. I just saw one shoot. You sure that wasn't me? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's wait, wait, wait. Okay. Here, and we got a minute today here. Um, Ken and I are the workers right now currently for the World's Championship to be held in Uvalde, Texas in 2012. I'm the contest manager, but Ken's in charge of the competition itself. The con he's the competition director. Uh, so anybody who's got about three or four weeks of time in 2012 with nothing better to do and likes to sweat, uh, because volunteer, sign up with either one of us, you can email me, I'm keeping a list of people who want to volunteer for all kinds of jobs, line jobs, uh, people need the bloggers we need, people want to take pictures and put them on their websites and all this kind of stuff. Um, 
or if you have a contact with a corporation who'd like to give us some money, uh, that's the best way we're going to raise money is through personal contacts. We're not a highly visible sport. We're not a huge sport. We can't pay for ads on TV and all that kind of stuff. So most of our money corporately usually comes from connections and connections to that kind of thing. So if any way you can help us, we'd love it. Talk to Ken, talk to me. But Ken's really my boss, so. Hardly. <laughs> Nobody's Linda's boss. <laughs> right, John? <laughs> um, we've got, uh, just mention, we're, we're always looking for tow planes. Sherman Griffith has agreed to be the tow plane collector for the contest. We figure we're going to need between 15 and 20 tow planes. So if you have an idea of somebody who might have a tow plane that we could uh, use to the contest, uh, let me know and I'll put you in contact with Sherman. And as we get closer, we're going to start tapping everybody for, for jobs. We're still far enough out right now so that we haven't started leaning on people too hard. But we're going to need a lot of help. It's going to take a lot of people to make this thing happen. What are the actual contest dates, Ken? Uh, July. I think it's all in August, isn't it? Or? So the practice is the last week in August. The contest then begins. In excuse me, last week in July, practice week. And the actual world begins like forget the calendar, but it begins like on July 28, 29 type thing through August 14th. Uh, there's a couple days there where it's like opening ceremony day, then you fly, then there's closing ceremony day. That's why there's a lot of pieces to this. But what I want you to do, if you know you think you really want to be involved, is to know ahead of time that what weeks to block on your calendar so you know what it is. And I'm telling you two years out so people can get thinking that way. Okay? It's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, will there be 120 finalists? We had another World Fair in 91 at Uvalde, and the last one in the U.S. before that was at Homs. So this is a big deal. Is it all the classes? Or? It's open 18 and 50 meters, the flat classes. That's the way they're grouping the times. And uh, last year, and about last time in Uvalde in 91, Uvalde got that contest, pulled up a bunch of things happened. They got it very, very late. And they really did it. Uvalde itself did like 99% of the contest. This year we've got a lot of planning time ahead of time, and I'd really like to involve the SSA members more, you folks more, in actually what's going on because we've got time to pull you all in and, and get time to organize it that way. Um, rather than being just Uvalde's contest, it really should be the SSA's contest because we are the, the hosting facility for it. We're just using Uvalde. Yeah. Will we have a pre world next year? The next year pre world is a modified pre world that's very very back down, but if there's a few worlds there next year in the same kind of dates. Well, we're, going to, we're going to have the Open Nationals, the U.S. Open Nationals will be there next year, and we'll allow other people to come and fly, you know, the internationals to come and fly, so it's, just, it's an open class contest, basically anything can fly. Okay. That's just our little commercial today. Thank you. So, yeah, contact me if you know anybody who might be able to help us with sponsorship. Okay, today, um, weather coming in looks very <coughs> strange. So, my best advice is refresh yourself on a safety finish. Make sure you understand the rules that that works under. We might have to call that. We don't know. The only place it's ever been called in many, many years is right here. So, um, we don't hope to ever call that again, but that's a possibility. It always is. You want to give a raise weather? Mr. Kelly will give raise weather. Uh, Ray Sennett says we're pretty much in agreement. Uh, this is a warm front will pass through the areas south and to north today at 2 p.m. showers and cumulonimbus in the area. Mid and low level clouds, clouds from uh, west will move into the area today. High level clouds are maybe visibility 6 plus miles. Surface winds 190 at 5 at 3,000 are calm at 6,300 at 6 and at 9,280 at 20. Um, we both agreed pretty close to the trigger. I said 81, he said 82. His max temps 88, mine's 88, which gives us the same altitude band of around 5,000. And the heights uh, reduced 20% due to wetness of ground. I think a lot of people are watching the radar loops right now. If that cell passes to the north of us, 